Okay. Um, hello. Uh, good morning, everybody, or good evening to those in the eastern part of the globe. Uh, I, I'd like first to thank uh, the organizer of this conference. Uh, and so today I'm going to talk about flat plants as an arena for superconducting and topological properties. Okay. Um, so this is the plan of my talk today. So I talk about superconductivity, superconductivity from repulsive interactions and the topological properties, either in equilibrium or in non-equilibrium. And for this part, I'll, I'll be talking about flat band superconductivity and also uh, non fermi liquid properties. For the topological pro properties, I'll talk about flat band topological states. And for the non-equilibrium topological states, I'll talk about Floquet topological insulator. And as future works, I'll mention uh, non-equilibrium induced superconductivity. This is still an open question. And I'll also mention uh, whether uh, flat band superconductivity uh, can produce topological superconductivity. Okay, so this is the plan of my talk today. So let's start with this one, which is a flat band superconductivity. Okay, uh, in this sort of table, uh, I sort of classified the pairing from repulsive interactions in case space and in real space. And this column here is for single orbital one band systems. This is for multi-orbital multiband systems. And these are flat band systems, either single orbital one band or single orbital multiband. Okay. Um, so this is the uh, uh, most usual case, uh, for instance, high density tube rate, where you've got the very well defined nesting vectors and Cooper pairs can virtually hop uh, across these nesting vectors. And we end up with uh, D wave pairing uh, if we have Q plates. Um, this is a multi orbital multi band case. A typical example is the ion based superconductors. Again, we've got these next nesting vectors in yellow. And this is a typical pair exchange processes, in this case, between the uh, electron pockets and the hole pocket. And we end up with uh, S plus minus pairing in the case of ion based. Okay, if we turn to the flat band systems, uh, they come in two flavors. One is a single orbital one band system. So some, something like this, we've got a one band, but we have some flat part or flat portions in the band dispersion. And uh, between the dispersive part and flat part, there are many, many sort of nesting vectors, a bunch of nesting vectors, if you like. And uh, so while we've got hot spot momentum transfer, in the case of two plates, hot spots are the antinodal regions. In the case of ion based, hot spots are uh, electron and hole pockets. But in this case, uh, we've got a bunch of uh, nesting vectors uh, across which uh, Cuba pairs can virtually hop. And I'm going to show, show that we end up with a very spatially extended uh, pairing in real space. And, oh, sorry. And if we go over to single orbital multi band case like this, uh, how do I? Okay. Um, if we go over to the single orbital multiband case, such as a dispersive band accompanying a flat band, then we can have similar bunch of Cooper pair uh, transfer channels. Okay. So uh, for the flat bands, uh, we have either two band cases or one band cases. Um, the, in, in the case of two band cases, the uh, Cooper pairs can virtually hop between the dispersive and flat bands like this. Um, in the one band case with a partially flat portion, then 
we can again have this kind of uh, uh, pre uh, uh, exchange processes. Okay, for the two bound case, namely dispersive bound plus a flat bound, then uh, in the case of attractive interaction, then we know that there is a very old history uh, dating back to the sewer condo mechanism for uh, dispersive bands. Uh, but here we are talking about the positive interactions, namely spin fluctuation mediated pairing, when one of the bands is flat. So the problem is completely different. And one interesting point is if you've got a flat band, uh, there's a possibility to have highly entangled interactions. Uh, I, I'll explain this uh, in a minute. And also, uh, if we've got flat band plus dispersive band, then uh, we can show that with, we've got higher TC for superconductivity when the flat band is incipient. This means that the flat band is close to, but away from your Fermi energy. Okay. Um, so let's uh, look, look at the uh, flat band uh, in mouth band case in more detail. So uh, this is a typical example, which we have studied a few years ago with Kobayashi. Uh, this is a repulsive Hubbard model on diamond chain. This is diamond chain. Diamond is, diamonds are connected with the uh, corner sharing uh, into a chain. And this is the simplest possible one-dimensional flat bands model. So this is a three-band syst three system, dispersive ones and flat bands in the middle. And this has a close connection with uh, what Kazuhiko Kuroki proposed uh, um, back in 2005. Uh, he named this narrow wide band system, uh, narrow and wide bands coexisting. And they show that this is a favorable situation to get higher TC. Okay, this is another case. And the basic intuition is um, the Kripa pair virtual hopping between dispersive and flat bands should enhance the superconductivity. Okay, and how about entanglement? Uh, we all know that if we have a flat band, then we have an overlapping one-year state. In the case of uh, a diamond chain, these are the one-year states. Uh, they overlap with each other like this. Okay, so this is the phase diagram we obtained with DMLG. Um, this is a band pairing. This is a, a case uh, of a band pairing less than one third, which means that uh, flat band is completely full and the lower dispersive band is uh, partially bigger. And we can show that we've got a superconductivity around here. If we have an exact one third filling, which means that flat band is just empty and the lower dispersive band is just totally filled, then the ground state is a topological insulator. So this superconductivity uh, sits right adjacent to a topological phase, right? Um, okay, by the way, the flat band ferromagnetism sits around here. Okay, how do I know that the one third field case is a topological insulator? We can show from the exact diagonalization result uh, by looking at entanglement spectra and edge states like this. And uh, in doing so, we notice that these spectra and edge states are very much diverse. When we cut the chain along this direction or along this direction, and this immediately uh, reminds us of what is happening in Holden's S equal one and fairing the chain. Uh, the system very much diverse when you cut the chain along this line or along that line, as uh, as, uh, it, as revealed by this uh, historical paper uh, course, course uh, by Hal Tosaki. Um, okay, so um, superconductivity may exist 
uh, when the uh, Euphemia energy is close to, but not right up to the flat band energy. Um, usually, the flat band does not intersect the dispersive one like this in a carbon lattice. But for the superconductivity, uh, we want to have uh, this kind of situation where the flat band intersects right uh, in the uh, dispersive band. Then, if we can have Fermi energy around here, then we can expect a higher TC plus superconductivity. So, the problem is can we construct such a model? And Mishumi here uh, got the answer yes, we can. We, if you have uh, uh, not only the nearest neighbor transfer, but distant transfers, both in the tetragonal and hexagonal cases. And um, another interesting point is uh, uh, in this case, uh, we've got a band in inversion like this, uh, the uh, orbital character changes between the uh, uh, upper band and the lower band like this. So we may have a chance to have topological, uh, Z2 topological systems. And uh, quite related works were done by a von Schoen's group here. Okay, um, for this whole audience, I don't have to remind, but flat bands a la deep, Mirke, Tasaki are not just flat, but anomalous in the sense that uh, no vernier states exist, no uh, spatially localized vernier states exist. Um, for the case of the deep model, um, this is the uh, overlapping vernier states. For the case of the Mirik model, this is the uh, overlapping vernier states. And for the case of the Tasaki model, these are the overlapping vernier states. And they are, are all uh, multiband systems. Um, um, this is because the band is flat because of a uh, kind of quantum mechanical interference. Uh, if you want to go from here, so here, there are two roots and there's quantum mechanical interference that makes this one flat. Okay, um, about the one-year spread for flat bands. Um, for topologically trivial flat bands, uh, Vanderbilt and the company uh, have this paper. For topological flat bands, Haruki, Watanabe and the company uh, talk about fragile topology. Okay. And uh, in more general terms, uh, topological systems have no spatially localized line states, uh, which means that there's no adiabatic route to the atomic limit, as uh, again shown by Haruki Watanabe. And indeed, historically, we, we know for a long time that quantum hold system, which is a, a, the first historical example of a topological system, have no one year states. And also, there's uh, another interesting property, uh, what is called quantum geometry of flat band wave functions. And again, Von Juni and the company uh, discussed this in terms of Landau levels. Okay. Um, how about the superconductivity? Does topological flat band favor superconductivity? And um, this paper, uh, this is a very seminal paper, I think, uh, show that yes. Uh, we, they can show that uh, superfluid weight is sort of topologically protected if the flat band is topological. Um, I think uh, later during the conference, uh, Paivi Terima and the co-workers are going to talk about this. Um, okay. Um, but they showed this for the attractive Hubbard interaction. And um, also for the attractive interaction, uh, they went beyond the mean field uh, combined by combining DM energy and exact derivation to show that this kind of formula, namely the super 
superconductive superfluidic uh, weight uh, is uh, proportional to the attract attractive Harvard U like this, uh, at least for the weak coupling cases for the Kleins lattice and also the uh, for att attractive leak lattice. Okay. Again, my personal question is uh, how about the situation for the repulsive about the models? And I think this is the uh, open question. Okay, let's go over to the one band system where a part of dispersion is flat. Okay, um, Charles Hayat and uh, our group have shown that uh, if you look at this kind of dispersion, it is just the usual uh, tight line model on a square like this, but we introduce a second neighbor hopping T prime which is about one half of the nearest neighbor hopping. So we've got kind of frustration, which makes these parts flat in the dispersion. And we can talk about the Cooper pair scattering between dispersive and flat parts. Okay, um, this is a spin susceptibility for this case. When we turn on the Hubbard U, the repulsive Hubbard U, and we've got a uh, uh, quite interesting structure. Uh, if we look at this case, for instance, um, the uh, spin susceptibility is very large over a very wide region in K space, which is a speciality of the partially flat band. Okay, how about superconductivity? And plotting Eliasberg uh, eigenvalue against the band filling. Um, the, if you look at the, those red dots, this is uh, for the singlet pairing, and we've got the double peak like this. Why do we have double peaks? Because the pairing symmetry are different. In this part, we've got the usual D way pairing, but if you come down to the second dome, then we've got this structure in K space uh, with a lot of uh, nodal lines. Okay, um, if you Fourier transform these, then we can show that the Cooper pair has a very extended structure in real space like this, extending uh, to even your close neighbor. Okay. Um, okay, uh, what is physically interesting about the flat band superconductivity? Um, in general terms, for usual dispersive bands, um, we can show that superconductivity from electron electron repulsion works much better in 2D than in three dimensions. Uh, we can show that by look, looking at the large spin fluctuation mediated pairing interaction like this. This is shown by uh, Ryotaro Arita and also by uh, Jill Gonzalez and the company. Okay, so, so uh, indeed, if you look at the known uh, high DC materials, almost all of them have layered structures. Okay, how about the flat band superconductivity? Uh, we can then show that we've got a totally different dimensional dimensionality dependence. Uh, in one B, um, on this kind of uh, uh, system, then we can show that the spin susceptibility is featureless and which gives us a kind of S plus minus pairing between flat band and dispersive band. So this is a S plus minus pairing, a flat and dispersive S plus minus pairing. Um, in the 2D for the partial flat band, um, then we can show that again, uh, we've got a wide area for the uh, spin fluctuation mediated uh, pairing interaction. So uh, I think this is a speciality of the flat band superconductivity, namely uh, three-dimensional systems are as good as two-dimensional systems, namely uh, they are outside of Ritter's theory. Okay, how about non ferrum liquid? Um, we looked at the uh, imaginary part of the uh, self-energy. Uh, this is a much better frequency. And if we look at the uh, exponent here, we notice that uh, this slope is 
smaller than uh, one. Uh, namely, uh, everyone knows that thermal liquid has imaginary part of self-energy uh, proportional to uh, omega squared on the real frequency axis, which means that imaginary part of self-energy on Matsubara axis is proportional to omega. But if this exponent is smaller than 0.5, we call the system a bad metal. And if we calculate this exponent, uh, the exponent is well below 0.5. So we do have a non thermal liquid here. Okay. Um, let's move on to the uh, uh, platinum topological states. Uh, in this case, we have to note that there is a local theorem which uh, dictates that finite range hopping uh, have no topological flat bands, as shown by this paper. So we have to put in something special, such as the Ovid interaction and so on. Um, the, for instance, this is the uh, designed material by us uh, in a collaboration with MIT chemist. Uh, this is an organic, phenomenic, and topological uh, system designed by us. This is a metal organic framework. Uh, this is basically a carbonyl lattice. And uh, this band here uh, has a non zero charm number. Okay. Now I come to the uh, final section of this ta table. And I want to uh, show that a totally different way to make the system topological is a Floquet topological insulator. Namely, um, if you shine a circularly polarized light to ordinary bands, uh, such as graphene, then we can open a topological gap dynamically. So my question today is, uh, if I shine a circular polarized light to a flat band system, what will happen? Okay, let's start with the ordinary Floquet version of insulator. Uh, Takashi, Oka, and myself showed uh, more than 10 years ago that if you shine a circular polarized light in zero magnitude to graphene, uh, there is a uh, DC hole current. And that is because uh, by doing this, we open a topological gap uh, at Dirac points in this case, dynamically. And this is the charm density in K space. Okay. And um, for, for the origin of graphene, it took more than 10 years to experimentally detect this phenomena. Uh, James uh, McIver in uh, Hamburg Max Planck Institute uh, experimentally verified uh, the plaquette uh, polarized insulator for graphene. Um, this is the, uh, the cover of uh, January this year's Nature Physics. Uh, these are the topological gaps. Lighting is anomalous for effect. Okay. Um, why do we call that an almost whole effect? Because we know that the Duncan Holbein back in 1988 uh, conceived quantum anomalous whole effect, namely quantum whole effect in zero magnitude with a, a rather artificial uh, theoretical toy model. This is very nice, uh, but uh, at that time it sounded artificial. But then, um, if you shine a circular polarized light to graphene, then uh, Kitagawa and the company in Harvard showed that in a leading order in the high frequency expansion, the effective model is exactly the same as Holden's model. So this is very realistic, right? And how about the flatman systems? So if you shine a circular plus light to B plus, then we open a topological gap between the flat band and dispersing bands. Okay. Um, so we can even uh, switch on the um, repulsive Havadu interaction. This is a Havadu, and this is the laser intensity, and this is the phase diagram. Blue part is molten insulator, 
uh, orange part is uh, uh, other faces, and if you look at the topological properties, then there are topological phases like this. And even within the topological phases, we have a topological to topological phase transition, which is because by shining a lot, the circular polarized light, we are inducing uh, distant neighbor effective transfers, uh, which are complex. And they behave like uh, uh, these oscillating manners. And every time these change sign, then we've got a uh, topological phase transition. And we can do the similar thing for the Ed Carbone lattice. And we can induce these uh, effective complex transpars by shining circular polarized light to Carbone lattice. And um, yes, in this case, uh, we also have the topological gap between flat and quadratic maps. Okay, if you look at the channel number, then uh, Carbone is a three band system. And if we I plot the channel number for the upper band, middle band in green, and lower band in red, uh, they behave quite wildly uh, against the laser field intensity. Okay. Um, I talked about the one year spread. Um, how about the flocket topological initiators? Do they have one year states? Um, Takashi Oka showed that uh, no, there's a topological obstruction and there's no spatial and temporal localized one year state. Okay, um, we can set another uh, situation which we called optical imprinting, namely spatially periodic circular polarized light illuminated on two dimensional materials, uh, which will give you an inside to control for K polarized insulators. This is a collaboration with uh, Abrahasa Hafezi. So uh, if you shine a spatially periodic circular polarized light, and if you change the lattice structure of the uh, spatial periodicity, then you can uh, degrade the reflection symmetry, which produces a complex hopping, as in Holden's model. Um, indeed, if you look at the topological phase diagram, uh, hexagonal is has the widest area for topological phases. Okay. Um, um, as a general question, uh, gen do we have a general experimental feasibility of flock K topological states? Namely, can we have intense enough laser for sizable topological gaps? And the answer is yes. With uh, today's uh, laser technology, uh, the intensity is uh, strong enough. Okay, so let me summarize my talk. I talk about these things. Um, flat bands do indeed have uh, unique opportunities. And um, how about open questions? Um, flat band superconductivity, uh, do the non-local interaction enhanced in flat bands? Uh, do we have non-Fermi liquid superconductivity? And how about non-equilibrium induced superconductivity? And if we combine these superconductivity and topological uh, in equilibrium, do we have flat band superconductivity to produce topological superconductivity? In non equilibrium, locate topological superconductors uh, can be uh, realized. Um, okay, um, just as a hint, uh, Group velocity vanishes at one of singularities. Um, some papers show that uh, this is a good place to look for topological superconductivity, such as D plus I D pairing. In the case of uh, uh, partially flat band cases, group velocity vanishes in finite areas. So this may have a similar thing. And also, uh, we can think of doping this kind of flat band system. And also nowadays we, we have a magic angle twisted by the Euclidean, which have uh, flat portions. 
and some people maintain that uh, we got more than 10 number. Okay, um, okay let, let me skip this. Um, I showed this table, and my guess is uh, this part, namely flat band superconductivity, is a good place to look for topological superconductors. Okay, let me thank my collaborators uh, for this one. Uh, I collaborate with these people, for this one, with these people, uh, for this one, with these people, and for this one, with these people, and uh, these are science findings. Okay, I think uh, uh, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Hideo Aoki, for this fantastic uh, talk. Thank you, excellent. And we, we have enough time for questions. So uh, please uh, go ahead and raise your hands or, uh, yes, I see that someone already unmuted himself or herself. Yes, uh, Professor Tasaki first. You can also Sorry. raise your hand in, this, you can also raise your hand in that uh, Zoom thing there. Oh, but, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, like this, okay, fine. yeah. Yeah, thank you. I, I learned a lot in 30 minutes. Very, thank you very much. So mm. well, my first question is about this uh, diamond chain. You said you have topological insulator in this yeah. diamond chain yeah. case. So, uh, and it's clear that you see different, you see this from edge states business, but uh, is it possible to characterize this topological state by some topological number like winding number or some index? Mm. Um, yes. Um, I think the uh, university class is the same uh, between the uh -huh. chain and Hordain's S equal one and Fermi chain. Uh -huh. so, uh, I would imagine that the Chan number also uh, shared by these two models. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, Bom Jung, you also had a question. Professor yeah, Aoki, thank you for the very interesting talk. So I learned a lot, a lot of things. So I have one question about the, the flat band superconductivity. So mm -hmm. you compare the case of the one band and multi band system. So what is the main difference between them and also what is the role of the inter band coupling? Mm -hmm. um, as um, I mentioned on this slide, uh, <laughs> There are a bunch of nesting vectors in this case, and there are also a bunch of nesting vectors in this interband processes. So in that sense, I think uh, the uh, uh, mechanism for the uh, for having superconductivity is similar. Uh, in this case, interband processes, and in this case, uh, this is intraband processes. Okay. Um, so the only difference is uh, the difference in the structure of these nesting vectors and the strength yes. of the uh, interband interaction. Um, so, uh -huh. for that, um, if I start from the on site Harvard repulsion, then we can have a unitary transformation to have an effective interband interaction in multi band cases. And uh, uh -huh. very, very, very large, something like a one half of the original Harvard U. I see. I see. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, more questions? Uh, let me ask uh, some on the, uh, on the Floquet uh, uh, topic. So one question I have is, uh, uh, you can, so to say, connect uh, uh, Floquet-driven systems with uh, other systems which are threaded by DC fields. Uh, can you comment on that? Uh, uh, what uh, what are the uh, uh, the consequences? So, meaning instead of taking, let's say, a two D system which you drive by an external field, you could take a uh, a three D system which you uh, which you uh, put under the influence of an external DC field, and then in principle obtain similar effects. So, sorry, I, I can't quite go to your question. Your question is. So the question is uh, whether, uh, so, uh, so for the first thing is not a question, but just a statement. So a, a driven, a d-dimensional driven uh, Floquet system is in some sense equivalent to a d plus one dimensional system, which is threaded mm -hmm. by a DC field. 
Um, and then my question is actually, what uh, what are uh, did you consider such analogies, and uh, can you say something right, about right. now? Um, I can imagine that um, three-dimensional system have similar flocate vertical states, uh, but in that case, you have to worry about the direction along which you shine your circular polarized light uh, mm -hmm. along one o o or along the one 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 and so on. And that uh, makes the uh, interband uh, interaction, the, the cloquet induced interband interactions rather different. Uh, that's very much depends on the uh, uh, direction along which uh, you shine the uh, laser light uh, in relation to the crystallographic axis. So except for that, I would imagine a similar uh, topological, cloquet topological states. And when you were discussing the uh, your Floquet results, uh, you you always uh, you, uh, I mean, you s said let's say you took the leap lattice with uh, three bands and then you uh, Floquet drive it and you still have three bands. But as a matter of fact, you of course have copies right of these right, uh, right. Floquet bands. So you were basically talking about this irreducible uh, triplet of of. Right. Uh, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. And right. you mentioned also that, that the Vanier states in these cases uh, are, that there are no Vanier states. Uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, do, what, do you, what, do you, what is your definition of Vanier state, in other words? Okay. Uh, can I look at the slide? Yeah. Right. This is not my work, but uh, work by Takashi Oka and Nakagawa. Uh, <laughs> and what they looked into is uh, you can uh, fully transform the Floquet block states, both in the uh, spatial direction and temporal direction. And they looked at the, uh, the question that do we have spatial localized and temporal localized money states? Um, what they found is there is some obstruction which inhibits to have these localized money functions. So namely, a driven system cannot be adiabatically connected to undriven insulator. What would mean temporal localized? I mean, I kind of um, well, special localized means right. temporal. Uh, since this is a dynamical system, uh, we also we, we have also to worry about the uh, uh, temporal free transform. Uh, please refer to this uh, uh, okay. paper uh, last year. Okay, sure. Thank you. Uh, there's a question from Din Lok Duong who asked in the chat. Uh, Din Lok Duong, can you unmute yourself, please? Yes. So, could you hear me? Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. So, my question related to uh, nearly last slide uh, mm -hmm. to mention about the doping uh, to induce superconductivity to compare the flat band. Okay. Yes, so uh, normally doping can be generated with a small concentration. Uh, you can see this is look like the one band be flat, right? But compared with um, people mentioned flat band should have some block state. So this mm -hmm. means that you need some parit, uh, parit, I mean, parit uh, condition in the flat band. So how to compare the flat band induced, uh, I mean, by doping and normal flat band uh, in the committee mentioned? Um, I well, I repeatedly stress that uh, flat band systems can have uh, entangled interactions, uh, especially when the flat bands are uh, uh, anomalous in the sense of uh, leap, uh, get to suck and so on. Um, then uh, we have uh, all, uh, these special one year states or absence of one year states. So my guess is in that case, the, uh, um, the pairing interaction uh, in the doped case uh, is very, very different from the uh, ordinary flat band. But uh, we have to work that out uh, in terms of the, uh, both the intraband and interband uh, pairing interactions. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, uh, any further questions? Do we have time then? Uh, let's, well, one, one question, sure, yes. Uh, well, uh, yeah, if possible. So I, I'm curious about how did you make uh, this uh, Kagome lattice into a topological thing uh, without full OK? So you said you had this sort of 
chemical engineered thing, and you said that you add interaction and make Kagome into yeah uh, topological uh, thing, and that's uh, yeah, it's very yeah yeah this one this is yeah. very interesting. Uh, what this, the basic idea? This is a designed metal organic framework. So these are orange balls are gold atoms. So since they are heavy mm -hmm. element, uh, they have a, a strong spin orbit coupling. Mm. And so we've got a carbon lattice with a strong spin of it coupling. And this is a result of the uh, uh, band structure, including this spin of it. And we've got uh, a topological gap. Um, am I answering your question? Uh, so is that, can you intuitively understand why this interaction makes these bands topological? Is there a simple oh, no, picture? This is just a Kagome lattice, nothing special. Uh, we know that uh -huh. we have a, a Kagome lattice with. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We know that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So this is just an ordinary. Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. The only Thank speciality you. is mm -hmm. we have an organic, ferromagnetic mm -hmm. uh, design system. That's oh, all. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think we uh, have to move on. It's time. So let us uh, uh, first uh, thank to our first speaker, Hideo Aoki.